Masha Miller here and I'm gonna do my Japan haul today and well by the time I'm shooting well since I'm shooting this video um, I've been back from Japan for about a couple weeks so like it's been really hard to not use like most of this stuff and by the time we get I get this video up it's probably gonna be like a couple months because I suck at editing so I went to Japan with two of my friends uh, Deborah and Gloria Deborah has a YouTube channel that I will link down below. Uh, her, her channel name is A Little Cheap and she makes awesome videos. Check her out. I went to Japan for three weeks during the winter time. It was pretty much, nope, it was like almost the end of winter, so it wasn't snowing, but it was still like insanely freezing. So uh, we went to two cities. We went to Osaka and Tokyo. Um, we well, we stayed there the longest. We stayed a week in Osaka and two weeks in Tokyo, and we went to Kyoto um, while we were in Osaka, like just for like a couple days to check out Fushimi Inari, um, Gion, and stuff like that. I actually didn't buy as much as I expected to. Um, I'm pretty sure I spent most of my money on food. Yeah, I have no impulse control when it comes to food. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I have are a um, couple snacks that I bought back from Japan. Uh, I didn't bring back that many snacks. It's just like the novel, you know, novelty things. It's like the ones that you can only find in Japan, if you get what I mean. First thing I got um, are sweet potato Kit Kats. And there are two versions of this apparently, like an orange sweet potato and a purple sweet potato. So this one's already been open, obviously. Um, so... There's not that many in here left, so it opens like that. And they come in little tiny packs like this. These are only seasonal in Japan, I think. So they're not around all the time. It's only like when sweet potatoes are in season. I got these from uh, a store called Don Quixote, which is like a tax-free store in Japan. It's really famous. Um, so the next thing I have um, are these Japanese candies, I guess. Um, we got, I got these from a grocery store called Life. Um, we went to in Osaka, and these are in the flavors Grape and Peach. These are amazing. I had like way more packs um, when I came home. So we went to a grocery store called Life. We wanted to go get the essentials. By the time we left, our shopping cart looked like a seven-year-old got a hold of $200 and spent like three hours in the candy aisle and the toy aisle. So the third piece of snack item I got from Japan um, is this. This is from Gion in Kyoto and uh, these are just like really really nice candies so they are all handmade so they open up like this. I got the pack of six. They come in packs of three, six and nine. Yeah these are kind of like a staple thing to buy if you want to go to Gion. Yeah this is like a very touristy thing but these are so cute. This is from a place called Kyoto Marion, Maron, Kyoto Maron. And the last snack item I bought is this. These I had to get because there's matcha in them. So usually the normal ones are um, chocolate and strawberry, but these are chocolate and matcha. I only bought one pack, I haven't opened this yet. So I got these in um, after we went to Universal Studios. Um, we went to like a this place called the Takoyaki Museum. It, it wasn't really a museum, it was just like a place that sold a lot of takoyaki um, and like little novelty, like keychain takoyaki character takoyaki things. But um, yeah, I found this in there and I had to buy it because like they don't have them here. The next group of items I want to move on to are gachapons. So um, gachapons are pretty like, pretty much like um, capsule toys, but in like Japan, they're like, like a whole new level. They are amazing um they have so many of them they have like warehouses full of them sometimes i didn't buy that many gachapons actually um the ones i came home with like that were mine were like four of them that it's four of them a couple of them were for like other people for presents and stuff like that so um the first one i actually ever got was this one so this is from uh dotonburi in osaka and it was a Sailor Moon thing. These ones are really annoying to open. Bear with me. No. No. 
Oh, I got it. Amazing. So, um, after all that struggle, um, so this is a Sailor Moon mirror, and it comes with this, this like nice little pamphlet thing that shows like all of the selections you can get. This is really really nice. Um, I don't actually know what like capsule is it. They have like the makeup capsule things. I know this one's a famous one, but I don't know what mine is. Yeah, so it's just a little mirror. It's gold, has like a moon on it, and on the back it says Sailor Moon. It's pretty cool. Um, I forgot how much this was. I think it was like 400 yen. But um, hey, it's a mirror. It's useful. That's like the best thing about the capsule toys in Japan is like that the item's actually useful. It's not like a bouncy ball that you're gonna lose in like three seconds. And now the Sailor Moon thing I have, which is also a pain in the ass to open. It's one of these ones. Um, this was from a different capsule toy from that. It's a scrunchie. This is a pamphlet that comes with it. It's really nice. This is a scrunchie I got. It's really, really nice. Um, they have like little patterns on it, like the, the compacts and moons and stars and a little dangly gem thing. So this is, I would use this. That's really pretty. Um, yeah, like I said, like the stuff there is actually pretty useful. So I'm not mad at this at all. The third one, I couldn't help. I had to assemble it myself. So um, it came in this this one. Um, I lost the pamphlet for it, but yeah, um, it was a DS stylus. It came like in in little parts so it could fit inside the capsule. So I got this one. It's a little like rundown and stuff because I've been using it on my DS. And it's Pokemon. It was really really nice, and I've been looking for a stylus because um. My DS, I lost the stylus of it, so um, when I saw this and it was like two bucks, I was like, yes! Obviously I had to get it and it was yellow to match mine. So, um, yeah, it's got the Master Ball. The last thing I got is, it was, this is like the only um, Gachapon machine of this that I've seen, like I saw like anywhere. So, this one's easy to open because it's got like the latch. And it's Fantastic Bees! And so this is the pamphlet I got for this one. And they're meant to be like little keychains with like little characters in them. So got that's is that Newt, Queenie, and Tina. You got Tina, Newt, and Newt again. When I saw this, I almost had like a meltdown. I had to get one. This is what they look like. It's really really nice. Um, they're pretty heavy too because it's like metal. So um. It's like this, and it slides open like that, and this is the one I got, and it's the Newt Scamander Magizoologist one. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I like it because like if someone opens it, it's like Eddie Redmayne's face, and it's like you're carrying around a dude's face on your bag. Yeah. Yeah, it's like fandomy, but it's not like that fandomy. So those are all like the child gacha ponds that I got. There are a couple more, but that are like minor they're like for touristy places and stuff like that these are two gachapons that i got these are like the really tiny ones these are like normal capsule toys so this one's from nara and this one from tokyo sky tree so i got these because like i didn't really feel like buying anything else from there so this one's like a tiny chibi sleepy reindeer kind of thing because nara is like a deer park and it was only like maybe a hundred or something yen so that's Nara. This is the Tokyo Sky Tree one. It's just from the normal capsule thing. This was also maybe 100 yen. It's just like things to remember the places by. Speaking of touristy things, um, I do have another pin that I got from Osaka Castle. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, this was, this was also because I didn't really feel like buying anything either. There were pins. I like to collect pins. So yeah. Osaka 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 Castle Osaka Castle pin. The next things I that I do have are stationery. And I went crazy with stationery, obviously. The first thing I should start off with is like the bigger stationery thing, which is this. This is the coolest pouch I have ever owned probably seen, honestly. I got this in Shibuya 109. Um, I don't particularly remember the store. 
I got it from no I don't it was just from Shibuya 109 um, we were just strolling around and I laid eyes on this and had to buy it so um, I'm a huge Marvel fan so obviously I had to get this um, and it's really unique too it's very like pop arty and they have like superheroes on this that aren't very um, common to see on like clothing items and stuff like that so there's like things like Dr. Octopus villain, obviously Black Panther is on that stuff. And you have Daredevil here and Black Bolt, who's one of my favorites um, ever. Lockjaw. Um, Black Widow wasn't seen on much stuff either. Um, you have Green Goblin up here and Nova. Yeah, so it's not only like, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, and Hulk and Thor, and that's all that matters. There's Spider Woman up there too. Um, the inside of it is like hot pink. I'm pretty sure this is only meant to be like a makeup bag, but if I spilt any makeup in here that I couldn't get off, I would never forgive myself, honestly. So, um, I only use this as like a pencil case, and yeah. So, the next um, piece of stationery I got was from Sunro Vivitix. So, it's this really, really cool uni style fit pen. So, I um, own already about two of these from Australia. Um, so I, I I love these so much. So you like fill the, you put in the ink here, and yeah, you can like customize it and stuff like that. But um yeah, I saw this design and I just fell in love. So it's um Kiki and Lala, little twin stars. Um, you can see them here, and you have unicorns, and yeah. So this is the first like stationary item I actually bought from Japan. Um, this is while we were in Tokyo. So this is the Sunrio Vivitix store from Shibuya 109. So I bought it like the same place, same building as this. Um, one of the major stationery stores that we went to is called Tokyo Hands. Um, I'd never heard of Tokyo Hands before. We'd like gotten there and Deborah and Gloria knew about it and I was like, whoa, how have I never heard of this? In here, if you want to get stationery you get it from kinokuniya like japanese stationery in tokyo it's tokyo hands so when we went up there it's like it's like a building of just stationery and it was like a dream come true so, i bought a lot of stuff and let's see. Whoops. so this is pretty much most of the stuff I got. I do have other stationery that I got but like I want to save that for like the Disneyland section of this video but um yeah so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna try to sort this out. The first thing I have in my hands are markers. So um these are only 100 yen each in Japan. In Australia these go for like three dollars each in Kinokuniya. So obviously like I had to buy the colors that I didn't have and like that I always wanted to splurge on and stuff like that. So this is an orange yellow, turquoise, purple, pink, grey and like a skin colour thing. So yeah, these are the friction ones so you can rub them out with the rubber on top. And yeah, I'm, I have nothing else to say. These are really really good. I always use them for headings in my books, in my, in my like exercise books and stuff when I'm studying. So yeah. And I also have highlighters. So. These are also frictions and these are also like $3 here and 100 yen in Japan. So I got lavender and like a, turqu like a pastel turquoise thing. So like yeah, chisel tip, average, but you can rub them out which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I always kind of wanted to splurge on these and like they were really nice colors. So I got those. The next thing I got was like an average pen. Um, this was also friction. So obviously I have an obsession with friction items and the style fit pens. This is just a black pen. Um, it's another friction one so you can rub out the ink so it's pretty useful when you make mistakes a lot like me. So yeah, normal pen. So the next thing I have is this fine liner pen. Um, it's got like a flexible tip. Yeah, it's kind of like a normal fine liner pen. Um, I mostly got this from my dad because he likes to draw and stuff so I thought he'd find this useful. Um, yeah, there's nothing really special about it. It was like 100 yen also. The next couple of items are all ink. So this is the ink that goes into this pen. So this can fit only five because you can tell from like the top. So I have the colors, um, a normal black ballpoint pen, 
I have orange, yellow, dark green, brown, pink, and a paisal. So these were all um, pretty much 100 yen each, give or take. Pretty sure this was a bit more expensive because it's the paisal. These uh, inks also go for about $3 each, which is also kind of ridiculous because it's ink. Come on, um, come on, because you have to buy the case to like be able to use them. But like, it's cool. These are mostly in 0.38, which is for me the best um, nib size. This is just a standard ballpoint pen. Um, it's pretty like average because it's a ballpoint pen, even. But um, this one's a cool one because it's a paser. It's really like interesting to see this. You just insert it into the pen. You know, I will show you. Um, so this is how it looks. It's already got the lead inside, um, and you can refill it. There's like a hole at the top, and I'm gonna use it on my Twin Stars pen. So pretty much, you just open it, and then you choose which thing you want to put it in. Yep, so you put it in and you click it, and then when you close it, it just works like an average pen. And then for the paser, you just like, and you go crazy, it's pretty cool. And then, yeah. So um, that's pretty much most of the stationery stuff I got. I do have like a little nicks and knacks from other like places like Disneyland. But um, I want to use those for the Disneyland section of this video. The next thing I want to get into is cosmetics. I didn't. I also didn't buy as many cosmetics as I, as I expected to, but like obviously I had to get some. So the first thing I have for my cosmetics is um this. This is a my lip tint pack. It's by Berrysome, and it's in the shade Sexy Red. This this kind of thing took the internet by storm like a couple years ago. Pretty much, it's like a really sick lip gloss looking thing and you slather it onto your lips um and then you let it dry and then you peel it off and it leaves a stain it lasts for like quite a while i used this to disneyland disney sea and yeah they stayed on for pretty much the whole day i never wanted to buy it online for some reason and then i saw this in like a store and i had to grab it so yeah the next thing i have is this nail polish this is from a store called it's demo but i don't know what brand it is i think it is by it's demo also um, and this was their collab with Disney, um, and I have the Chippendale color. Yeah, this is really pretty. It's got like chunky glitters in like orange, blue, and pink. I have like hearts and Mickey Mouse shaped glitter in them. Um, so it does seem pretty opaque in the in the bottle, obviously, but um, it's actually quite sheer. So what I like to do um, is layer it on top of the Formula X um, nail polish by Sephora in the shade Alchemy. So pretty much the base colors of these are pretty similar already. If you wanted that like full glitter effect, this is the way to go. So the next thing I have is by Can Make. This was also from its demo. And it's just this really nice um, cream highlighter. It's got like a bluey tinge to it, but I don't know, it was really cool. Um, it was really, It's really small and cute too. So it looks like this. And I forgot how much this was. I think it was like five bucks so um and yeah can make is a really good brand so it's like this and if i just swatch it a little bit it looks like that so it's a cream highlighter and yeah it's pretty um i don't know if that's a shade but it says 6j2 not too sure but yeah it's cute right so the next cosmetic item that i have are these lashes so these are by a brand called Diamond Lash and I've already used some and obviously I lost a pair because I'm irresponsible like that. These are from the Rich Brown series. Um, these were recommended by Michelle Phan and Korean makeup artist Pony. Um, I love them both so when I saw these I had to get them. They look very very natural. They look way more natural than I expected honestly. These are pretty much fit for Asian eyes so you don't have to cut them down or anything. So you can see Michelle Phan use these in her Cashmere Kitty video, I believe, where, um, yeah, she pretty much talks about them and she puts them on so you can see how they actually look. And Pony also uses these in her Get Ready With Me Tokyo video and that's where I like fell in love with these. I was like, I have to find them, I have to buy them. And I found them and got them, so I don't regret buying these at all. And the last cosmetic thing I have is a eyeliner from Dollywink. 
Um, obviously, Dolly Wink is like a massive brand in Japan, and I do love their eyeliners. Um, I always use the pink one, which is the normal like formula, but recently they came out with this one, which is um, waterproof. And I remember seeing this, I was like, whoa. I had never seen it before. So um, this is the waterproof one, and I do have the two other colors, the brown and the black. So this is the red packaging. This is the normal pink packaging. And this is the purple packaging for their brown shade. This does stay on forever though. It's really hard to budge. Um, you do have to use like makeup remover to get it off if you want to. So it just comes in a little brush tip and it leaves like a really solid line. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. It's like a really good eyeliner. So um, the next category that I want to go into is the clothes that I bought in Japan. Um, again, I didn't buy that many clothes, um, which is also really weird, but yeah, I'm happy with what I got. So the first things that I have are socks and they're from a shop called Wego. Uh, I already used this pair because I couldn't help myself. So they're really cool. They have like little stripes with like see-through panels in them. So to give it that like tattoo effect, um, I have them in black and white. So these are also the same. And yeah, so this is a store we found in Shibuya 109. Apparently it's like a massive chain, so they have the stores everywhere. And it's pretty much my favorite shop in Japan. So another thing that I got from Wego is this jumper. Um, it's just a nice cropped jumper. Um, it's got like the cold, the cold shoulder thing going on. So this brochure um yeah i was really happy with this it was maybe like 15 to 20 dollars i've been looking for a jumper like this for quite a while and it's like really good quality um it's pretty thick it's really warm um and it fits very well it's a free size item too and i'm not exactly thin but it fit like pretty bloody well so i'm very happy with this the next two things that i have are from a japanese store called gu which is kind of like a the baby of uniqlo because they're under the same company so i got a shirt and a jumper so i'll start off with the shirt um so it's a marvel comic shirt and it's long sleeve um this was like under ten dollars that was insane yeah it is by gu and it's licensed marvel comics and i really really like this because um it's not like in your face fandomy if you get what i mean so like it's not like wham i am a marvel shirt look at me i feel like the clothes that i wear i always have something that is like subtly fandomy so like i would wear like a ring or like a bracelet or my phone case would be like a fandomy item so yeah that is what i like about this shirt because it's like very simple it can like match it with anything you could wear it with a like denim jacket you can wear it with a bomber it's like pretty much very versatile but it's also like suddenly fandom -y. yeah i was really really happy with this the only fandom items of clothing you can really buy here are like kmart and jj's and they're always like really in your face um sometimes it's cool but like sometimes simple is like always great so next up is the white sweater the white knit sweater so i didn't own a white knit sweater before this so um and this was also like under ten dollars i mean come on how is that even possible it was great so yeah a simple white knit sweater goes with anything yada 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 it's really warm really sick so yeah so the next item of clothing that i that i have is from uniqlo um and it's this green t-shirt with a little green man on it so it's just a simple like t-shirt and it's like it's insanely simple then when you flip it to the back boom toy story little green man so this was a great find um i don't know why i was so drawn to this i think it's because like the clothing items in japan and uniqlo japan and uniqlo australia aren't always the same so this is um, a shirt that I could probably only find in Japan um, but yeah it's like it's simple on like, Uniqlo it's great so it's also great quality like, it's really soft um, 
yeah and I can also wear it with anything so win-win and this was like about 10 bucks so yeah little green man shirt um the last item of clothing I got is my favorite that I bought in all of Japan um it was kind of an impulse buy and it wasn't cheap it is thrifted which is like the probably the best part of it and it is like one of the items of clothing that I'm most proud of that I'd like wear everywhere and it's a bomber jacket but it's Mickey Mouse and it's thrifted it's like everything that is in today so it's like a massive oversized bomber jacket it's like silky and it's the brand's called Chalkline um, I'm pretty sure that's like a old brand maybe but can't really be too sure and the back of it's even cooler so um, I, I'm not mad at this at all maybe the price was a little bit like for something thrifted but like it is Mickey Mouse and it's vintage and it's a bomber jacket and it's like I've never seen anything like this before so I bought this in Harajuku obviously um, and I am very happy that I got it I don't have any regrets about buying this I did wear this to um, Disney Sea. obviously I had to because like Disney I had to wear this out in Japan like I couldn't just bring it here and be like whoops I didn't wear it in Japan at all I'm so happy with this and it's very soft and it's very warm because the inside um, so it's all buttons so and the insides like the woolen kind of thing so it's like really really warm very 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 good find I'm so happy I bought this um one of the other places that we went to in Japan was the Pokemon Center and that was also really really cool um it's just like an entire floor of just Pokemon merchandise and so I got a couple things um this is a print it's like plastic and it's a Pikachu and Vulpix like a snow Vulpix thing and I think this was from a like a event that they had for winter but yeah it says Pokemon Center at the bottom and yeah that's just a print and another thing that I got from there is a Rayquaza key ring thing that I'm gonna put on maybe a bag or my keys unfortunately I didn't have that many characters of these of like the key rings and they didn't have any pins either um which made me kind of depressed but um yeah so I got the Rayquaza one um I was also looking for a Psyduck one but they only had the Rayquaza one so I had to get it and this was maybe like two three dollars that's all the stuff that I got from Pokemon Center so the next thing that I want to go into are medallions um those are like the little um things you pay and then like they press out like a coin looking thing that mostly for touristy areas um they don't really have any purpose but to look cool so this one is a hello kitty one i got from odaiba um they're generally pretty cheap they're like maybe 100 200 yen so you get to choose your design obviously so this is the odaiba one the next ones that i have are from universal studio so this is cookie monster and this is a spider-man one and they are pretty awesome so yeah so the next four that I have are from Disneyland and Disney Sea. So this one is Donald Duck and it's got the train that goes from Disneyland and Disney Sea from the station. This one is Disney Sea and it's got Buzz and Woody on it and it's got the 15 year event that they were having. This one is from is like specifically for the 15 year um, anniversary thing I think it's a 15 year but it's called the year of wishes so this is also Disney Sea. this one is Mickey Mouse and it's from Tokyo Disneyland and this one's pretty cool because it's the only silver one that I have and it's Mickey Mouse so the next category that I want to go into are homewares I guess um, it's just stuff I have these from the Disney store so they're not from Disneyland but the Disney store and they're pretty much these like mini sauce plate things and so this is the white one I have I also have them in red and black so it's like the you know classic Mickey Mouse colors so this is the one in black 
and this one's the one in red. So yeah, they're really nice. I don't know why I bought these. These were like on impulse. I thought my mom would like them and she does. So you can put like little sauces on them and there's like ceramic and these are like maybe five bucks each. So like they're not expensive either. And so yeah. And the next homeware item that I have is this. These are Star Wars chopsticks. Star Wars lightsaber chopsticks, might I add. And they light up. So I'm gonna pry them open. I've been looking for these everywhere after I saw them like on the internet and I figured that Japan would have them. They sold them in this massive electronics store that we went into in Akihabara but they didn't have them in Disneyland which was really really weird for me but I did end up finding them and buying them this was like on a wish list that I had I have to find lightsaber light up chopsticks and get ready for it three two one bam they are Yoda's ones and they light up green and yeah like there is no other way to eat food like anymore these are like the only chopsticks i use around the house they're pretty great they light up there's nothing wrong with these i can't see anything wrong with them and you just press the button here to turn it on and off so yeah so while we were in japan we fulfilled one of the things on our bucket list and that was going to a maid cafe and the cafe we went to was at home cafe we found out about this place through simon and martina um or eat your sushi as they're known as now they were eat your kimchi but yeah they did go there and did like a little vlog um because they got like special permission to vlog at the cafe but obviously you can't take photos of the maids or you or you can't take videos of the performances but um it was a really really cool experience and I did get a Polaroid with one of the maids. This is a little pamphlet thing they give you for the photo. And that's my Polaroid. So um, back then my hair was like a purple. It was more purple. Um, so I chose the maid, the one maid with pink hair. All three of us did get a Polaroid with the maids. And yeah, it was really fun. Um, it was really happy. You like. It just felt really really happy you can't help but smile while you're there so yeah so the next thing that I want to go into uh, the things that I got from the Studio Ghibli Museum and that was a really really cool thing too because um I grew up watching Totoro and Ponyo and then as I grew up I watched more movies like Kiki Delivery Service, Spirited Away um, Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, so forth, so forth. So, um, obviously I did have to go to the Ghibli Museum and I got a couple things. First things I have are little prints. These are um, postcards, but like they have pretty prints on them, so prints. And I got the House from Ponyo and Howl's Moving Castle, pretty much. Um, and you have Howl and Ponyo. Um, what I was really surprised with the Studio Ghibli Museum was that they had a lack of items that were from Spirited Away. I did really want to buy a Spirited Away print, but the only one that I could find was of the bathhouse. Um, and obviously, like, the bathhouse is very significant to Spirited Away, but it looked like every other bathhouse. Like, if you saw it, you wouldn't be like, oh, that's a Spirited Away bathhouse. It'd be just like, oh, that's a really nice drawing of the bathhouse. Yeah, they didn't have many Spirited Away things, which is really, really depressing, but... So I only got two of these prints. The next things I bought are these little, like, Lucky Dip bookmarks. And these are, like, the actual film strips from the movies. So I have Howl's Moving Castle and Ponyo, again, because, um... Well, for these ones, they didn't have any of the movies that I was, like, into or knew kind of thing. So let's start off with Howl's Moving Castle. And so these are the film strips. This isn't just blank, it's just like a really dark scene. So each of the scenes I got have Sophie in them. And this is Sophie in her hat store in the beginning of the movie. This is Sophie as an old woman. You can see her like alongside here. This really, really dark scene, you can't even see it. You, oh wait, there you go, kind of at the top. This scene is 
from Sophie just before she meets the Wicked Witch um, that turns her into an old woman. Spoilers, I'm sorry. These are pretty cool because these, these are like actual film strips from the movie. So yeah, it's like, you know, really nice souvenir gift. And these are the ones from Ponyo. The ones from Ponyo I got like were really good scenes. They were all very bright and colorful. So this one is from Sosuke's mother's kitchen. It's of Sosuke's, Sosuke's mother. And it's her in the kitchen. The second one I have is of the um, water goddess from the end of the movie, I believe. And it's just so pretty because you can see like all of the detail and how they like make the halo of her. So yeah, this is the second one. And the last one I'm very happy with is of Ponyo. So this is a Ponyo sprouting limbs and you can like see her little siblings around her and yeah that's really really nice. I really this one's my favorite one because it's of the main character. It's of it's just it's just so pretty. So yeah, these are all six of the scenes that I got and they're all bookmarks. The last couple things I have are all pins. So I have four pins from the Ghibli Museum and there are Ponyo, Gigi, the mini cat bus, and Totoro. And these are probably like four or five dollars each. So that's pretty cheap considering like how expensive pins can be, especially since they're licensed and officially from this, from the museum. Yeah, these are the pins that I have and they're all very, very nice. Um, so I did get two things from Totoro and I'm very happy with them. These are really good quality. They're very, very nice. Um, yeah, so the thing with the Ghibli Museum was that um, Hayao Miyazaki wanted to create the illusion of like it being a separate world from outside. So you couldn't take photos in it, but obviously we're tourists, we do sneaky peeks, rebel, so forth. But the Ghibli Museum was amazing. You could see like all of the concept art. You could see like one-off movies that are um, only shown in the Ghibli Museum. So we saw the one with the boy and the bunny, I think, and they like and they race um, for most of the movie. That was really really cute. Yeah, you can't find those movies online, so they're like little short films. They're like 10, 15 minutes long. The next couple items I have are from Disneyland and Disney Sea. Again, I didn't buy much in Disneyland and Disney Sea as I expected. So the first thing I have are chopsticks. For some reason, these are enormously long i don't know how long they are these are 33 centimeters long i got these for my parents so that like when they want to cook they can just use these chopsticks to like stir fry and stuff like that so they have mini a mini pair a mickey pair and a donald duck pair uh, yeah i got these from disney sea i believe but like they pretty much have the same stores in both parks um, only some items are exclusive, but I'm pretty sure these are like you could buy these in both the parks, but you can't find these in the Disney store. So bear this in mind that the items sold in the Disney store will not be available in Disneyland and Disney Sea. I guess it's pretty cool that way, so it's like, oh, I could have bought it here for cheaper. And the next ones are just pens. So this is also another style fit one. Um, this one's from. Disneyland, I believe, and like, because I, I had to leave their bikes like with something, otherwise I just regret it. And this is also from Disneyland, and this is Monsters Inc. and this is Alice in Wonderland. So it's just an average pen. Um, the ink is yellow, so to match, you know, everything else. And it has Rose on it, the little secretary woman. So this is the other pen that I have. Um, it's the same as this one, just different patterns kind of thing. So yeah, so this is from Alice in Wonderland and it already came with the ink which was really really cool um, and yeah, I this is this is exclusive to the parks because it already says on the side it says Tokyo Disney Resort so you can't find this in Disney Store, you can't find this in Tokyo Hands, Kinokuniya, blah 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 this is only in Disneyland and the last thing that I have from Disneyland and Sea is this monstrous thing. This is a popcorn bucket that you can buy from Disneyland and Sea. Um, I think this one's exclusive to Disneyland. Um, it's, a, it's sold in Tomorrowland and 
you fill it up with popcorn pretty much it's hard plastic it's very durable um and you can get refills for five dollars i think so yeah this is pretty good it's so spacious um i can fit my phone in here it's an it's an iphone 6 plus and it, i usually wear 3d cases and they fit easily in here i might actually use this for a bag one day like just an obnoxious plastic r2d2 bag i'm sorry that was very loud a lot of people in japan use these and anyways and they walk around with them around the necks and snack on popcorn while they're waiting in lines and i think these are like this kind of thing is exclusive to tokyo disneyland i don't think like the um the ones in america the ones in singapore and hong kong they don't have this there were like a ton of them there was dumbo which deborah got there was duffy the bear um you have like little round they look like sum sum heads but like they don't have any faces kind of thing so it's like just the hats so you have donald duck Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, which Gloria got, and you can get Minnie Mouse's bow. And there's also a BB-8 one. You could get a Pooh Bear one, and they all range from different prices. I think it was 15 to like $21. The most expensive ones I found were the BB-8s and the Duffy and the Dumbo one. Um, the cheapest ones were the Minnie Mouse bow, the Mickey, Minnie, and Donald head ones, but this was 20 so it wasn't the most expensive, but it's it's really cool i am so happy with this thing hmm. so the next couple items that i have are from harry potter world in universal studios and that was like a massive highlight of my trip because i'm also a massive potter head going to harry potter world has been like one of the biggest dreams of my life and i'm so happy that i got to go that i had the opportunity to go we spent an entire 10 hours in there so we got two t two day tickets for universal and we spent a day doing everything except harry potter world which killed me and then the last day we spent harry potter world in only it was great um still not satisfied though because you can never be satisfied um, the first harry potter item that i got was a gryffindor scarf we got this from gal drags visiting where um we i pretty much I prepared for this occasion because I knew I had to get a scarf. I rocked up to Harry Potter World without any scarf at all. Um, and when I first went in there, I straight away went into Gal Drags Wizarding Wear and bought a scarf. Um, they have two different styles of scarves there. And it's this one, which is like a more maroon with a yellow. And there's another one, which is like Gryffindor on it. And it's red and yellow. I don't particularly like the massive Gryffindor one because it was so fandom-y and I think the whole point of Harry Potter World was meant to make you feel like you were in like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter not like just a fan of it kind of thing and that's what I found really really cool because the items that they sold weren't so bam in your face I'm a Harry Potter fan it was more like bam in your face I'm a wizard um that's what I really enjoyed about it and so yeah this is my Gryffindor scarf I am a Gryffindor um I've taken the BuzzFeed quiz, the Pottermore quiz, like other like play quiz, How, what is your Hogwarts house? And I've gotten Gryffindor in pretty much all of them. So yeah, go Gryffindor. Deborah and Gloria are both Ravenclaws according to Pottermore. So they did get the Ravenclaw scarves. And yeah, we just went wizarding everywhere. So the next thing I have is a Hogwarts ring. So this was also kind of on a whim, I guess, because I just wanted a ring. So it just, it's, so it's like what I said, like the way I want to dress is like subtly fan to me. So this is just a tiny little thing. Go Hogwarts. Another thing I got from Harry Potter World is this butterbeer mug. This is like the souvenir mug that you can get from the Hogshead or Three Broomsticks or from like any of the um, butterbeer vendors that they do have around the Harry Potter world and um, you could get, so you have a choice of getting the butterbeer in a normal plastic cup or um, the hard plastic mug looking thing and you it's only like a couple dollars extra I believe and yeah I would just tell you right now butterbeer tastes like the nectar of angels it's so good but because I do like savory foods more um, 
I could only drink like a cup of this. So this is like full to the brim and it's like a fizzy honey like gingery kind of flavor. It doesn't sound good when you throw ginger in there, but it's like it tastes really really good. It's carbonated. The cold one's carbonated, which was really really weird for me to find out, but it tasted great. So my prize possession, pretty much the best thing that I bought in all of Japan, is my wand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did go to Ollivander's and we all did buy wands. I didn't buy a character wand, I ended up getting my own wand. And this is the Vinewood wand. According to Pottermore, my wand is 12 and 3 quarter inches, Vinewood with a slightly yielding flexibility and a phoenix feather core. Yes, I remember all of the characteristics of my wand, according to Pottermore. This is my wand, and I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so this one has a sensor at the top, so you can use it in the park, and it comes with a map of the park. And so this is pretty much the basic map of the park and it shows um, the different points in which you can use this wand to make something happen. Um, I'll probably insert a clip about it somewhere here. Wands in Harry Potter World are pretty much categorized into two different parts. Um, they're either your own wands or character wands, and then they branch out further into magical and non-magical ones. So the magical ones are the ones that work in the park, so they have a sensor at the top, and you draw a pattern like in front of the area, and then the spell works. And the non-magical ones are just like props. So I did ask um, the lady in Ollivander's if this works in Ollander and apparently it does so when I go to Ollander I'm bringing this with me Woohoo! so this is pretty much my wand it's got like all these wonderful little knobs and it's just it's so pretty I'm very happy with it I'm pretty sure this is way longer than 12 and 3 quarter inches um I don't know it looks pretty long to me the inside of Ollivander's is actually insanely beautiful it's pretty much what you imagine. It's like floor to ceiling, all boxes of wands, and they're like not props, like they actually have wands inside. Um, I think the next one that I might want to buy, maybe either Luna Lovegood or Remus, Remus Lupin, they're both my favourite characters. So um, next time I go to Harry Potter World, I'll figure that out. And I also want to buy a Newt Scamander's wand soon. So when I have money, I will start a wand collection maybe. So. So yeah, that pretty much ends it for my haul, and thank you so much for watching, if you're still watching. And yeah, um, hit like, I guess, and subscribe if you want to, I don't know how this works. This is like my first face-to-face -face video I've ever done. I'll be back soon with maybe something else, hopefully. I suck at editing.